drink as for gastrodynoscopy or EZD. Extending the gastric ward by air infusion is important to avoid overset of lesions and allow for accurate evaluation of their characteristics. If stomach inflation is insufficient, the lesions may be hidden between the gastric folds. However, frequent deflation during endoscopic air infusion tend to occur in patients with hiatal hernias. Thus, adequate extension of the stomach is difficult in these patients. We applied clerical pressure with the Selix maneuver. A clerical pressure technique called Selix maneuver is typically used to exert external mechanical pressure with a force of 13 newton on the clerical cartridge to prevent aspiration of gastric contents during emergency induction of anesthesia. A previous study suggested that clerical pressure of greater than 20 newton can cause neck pain and discomfort in conscious patients, and that greater than 14 newton can cause airway obstruction. Some reports have described esophageal rupture because of a rapid increased esophageal pressure, such as vomiting during application of clerical pressure. We applied clerical pressure with a force less than 20 newton during EZD in patients who were unable to maintain air pressure in the stomach. If the patient felt pain, began vomiting, or exhibited unstable respiratory condition, we immediately released the pressure. With the patient in the left lateral decubitus position, we bent the head back, supported the back of the neck, and pressed the cricket cartridge gently backward with a force of less than 20 newton. During EZD, despite continuous air infusion, the gastric wall didn't extend sufficiently because of frequent deflation. After we apply critical pressure, the gastric wall was fully extended without deflation. As a result, all mucous membranes between the folds could be observed. This is an endoscopic image of the pharynx before critical pressure. After applying critical pressure, the hypopharynx was closed, while the airway remained open. We retrospectively reviewed 38 consecutive patients who experienced frequent gastric deflation and underwent application of critical pressure during EZD, among 368 patients who underwent sedated EZD in our hospital from April to July 2017. We evaluated the patient characteristics, presence or absence of the hiatal hernia, metazoram dose, success rate, and adverse events. We defined success as prevention of gastric deflation by application of critical pressure, full gastric extension, and adequate evaluation of the gastric wall characteristics. Presence of hiatal hernia was defined as grade 3 or 4 in Hill's classification. The mean age in the subject group with crackled pressure was 5.9 years older than the control group without crackled pressure. The rate of hiatal hernia was significantly higher in the subject than control group. The median metazoram dose was the same in both groups. The only significant difference between patients who underwent effective and ineffective application of critical pressure was age. The mean age of the four patients with ineffective pressure application was 9.4 years younger. The reported adverse events were mild neck pain and discomfort. Our success rate was 89.5%. In conclusion, we observed higher rates of gastric deflation among older patients and those with higher hernias. Application of critical pressure had a higher failure rate among younger patients. This might have been due to the stronger upper esophageal sphincter and weaker sedation among younger patients.
application of critical pressure requires no equipment, is highly effective, and has a low rate of adverse events. We consider this technique to be a simple, effective, and safe procedure for prevention of gastric deflation during sedated EZD.